Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen, meine Damen und Herren und ganz herzlich willkommen hier zu Tag 3 auf der Smart Country Convention 2023. Sie sehen es, die Reihen haben sich ein bisschen gelichtet, aber Sie, meine Damen und Herren, haben definitiv alles richtig gemacht, auch heute noch mal hier zu sein, denn es warten noch einige spannende Themenkomplexe hier auf der Plaza Stage auf Sie, zum Beispiel unser Slot des Bundesministeriums für Wohnen, Bau und Stadt. Da werden wir dann gleich über Kommunen sprechen, wie Sie voneinander untereinander lernen können und somit gemeinsam den Weg in Richtung Smart City bestreiten. Wir werden über Cloud und Cloud Transformation sprechen und ganz zum Abschluss des Tages noch einmal unser großer Slot eine ganze Stunde lang nur zum Thema künstliche Intelligenz. Jetzt wollen wir aber gerne in den Tag hinein starten mit einer Keynote unseres Partnerlandes. Unsere Keynote Speakerin ist uns an dieser Stelle virtuell zugeschaltet und ich werde jetzt einmal ins Englische rüber switchen. So ladies and gentlemen, please join virtually today Valeria Ionan. She is Deputy Minister for Euro Integration at the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. Ms. Ionan, it's a very, very pleasure to see you on stage here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dear colleagues, warm greetings from Ukraine. I'm very happy to welcome everyone to the third and final day of the Smart Country Convention in Berlin. First of all, I would like to express our gratitude to the government of Germany, Bitkom, Berlin Mess, and all of the partners who support Ukraine for this great opportunity. As you already know, this year Ukraine became an official partner of the conference. Such opportunities are the best way to show that Ukraine is not just a country at war. We are a country that can bring value to the world. And I am happy that Ukrainian companies has also become a, became a part of it. So I have prepared a small presentation for you about our great achievements in digital transformation. And I hope you will see my screen right now. You can see the screen. Please give me some sign that everything is that everything is fine. Colleagues, do you see my presentation? Yeah, yeah, das sieht doch hübsch aus so. Yeah, yeah, ich, wir haben gerade, ich wusste ja, dass sie den Teil. Sorry. So, first of all, I would like to say that. Ukraine has recently been called a European digital transformation tiger. Ukraine is also the first country in the world where digital passports are totally equivalent to paper or plastic ones. And this is because everything we create, all services that we create, and all products that we create, we are doing with a human-centric and user-centric approach. So uh, we have a vision. We want to build the most convenient digital state in the world. And we have achieved a lot for these past four years. Probably one of our biggest achievements is our DIA ecosystem with our core product, State Super App DIA, which means action. So basically, our State Super App DIA contains 14 digital documents in the application around certain services and also digital signature. Today, there are more than 19.7 million of users uh, who are using our State Super App DIA. I'll show you a short video. In 2019, we initiated a new age, digital age. We created the world's first digital passport, a passport that's always on your smartphone, a passport that's impossible to forget, a passport that doesn't require a copy and no resign on it. Confirming your identity takes just two clicks. Sharing a certified document, same thing, instantly. It just takes two clicks. Passport in DIA simplifies dozens of day-by-day -day situations. So, as I said earlier, uh, we have around 30 services in smartphone. And even before the full-scale Russian invasion to Ukraine, Ukrainians have been able to pay fines through DIA, to pay taxes through DIA, to use absolutely different services, uh, for example, to share uh, their documents and, and many, many others, like E8, which we launched during the COVID pandemic. So, when, if you remember, when the COVID started, it was a great challenge for every government. And Ukraine faced this challenge too. So uh, we 
had a challenge to, on the one hand, motivate people to get vaccinated, and on the other hand, to support SMEs who suffered the most. So we launched a service which is called E8, and we told our citizens, get vaccinated, get financial assistance through the DIA app, and use this money for libraries, for cinemas, for any other SMEs who suffered the most. And it, this service was a huge success, and now we are using this service also during the full-scale Russian invasion to Ukraine to support our, our citizens. Another great service is a digital signature, which is also available in the application and gives a possibility to Ukrainian users to open bank accounts online or to sign documents online. DIA Signature is a secure electronic signature valid across Ukraine and Europe. Imagine being able to sign a contract with a new employee anywhere in the blink of an eye. Creating it is easier than finding a pen to sign paper documents. Selling the franchise of your bakery without a notary. Is it your fantasy? In the select signature from the menu. Smile or blink your eyes, and the signature is always in your pocket. Zero bureaucracy, only convenience. Just the realities of Ukrainians. So, we also have a state portal of public services, DIA where we are digitizing all of the services in Ukraine. For now, we have more than 120 public services available, including the fastest business registration in the world. So Ukrainians can register their business only in 10 minutes online. But we also have a lot of other projects which are inside of the ecosystem. One of those is DSTD, a special economic and tax regime for IT companies. And basically, this project was launched two weeks prior to the full-scale Russian invasion to Ukraine. And already we have more than 700 companies who joined this project. And among those uh, are Ukrainian companies, but also international companies such as, for example, Visa or Revolut. So this project helps us to sustain our digital economy even during the times of war. Another great project of the ecosystem is DA Business, is a national program of a support SME, which has two components. The first one is basically the online one-stop shop for a uh, future church and existing entrepreneurs, which gives the possibility to use more than 100 different products, free consultations uh, on different topics, free online school, marketplace of financial products, uh, a great infrastructure map of SME, uh, SME organizations, uh, export section. So basically, you name it and you will definitely find it on the DA Business platform. And another component of this project is the network of hubs which are offline centers of support for entrepreneurs. And uh, there are 13 centers in Ukraine, and one center was opened in Warsaw. So basically, those are the places where people can come and also get consultations offline if they would prefer to have them offline. But they could also join long-term and short-term educational events, test their products in pop-up locations, and basically meet clients, partners, and uh, investors. And now the project of the DIA ecosystem is DIA Education, which was launched in 2020 as the platform for digital literacy because if you are building the most convenient digital state in the world, it's, important, it's very important that uh, every citizen would have at least basic level of digital literacy so they could use those services, those benefits and products with which state is creating for them. But of course, the world is very turbulent and there are a lot of challenges and you know that the full-scale Russian invasion to Ukraine brought a lot of challenges on all fronts, including economical front and now we have a pretty high level of unemployment and that's why we see a demand on rescuing. So this year with the support of Google Work we have relaunched our platform and now it's a national entertainment platform for rescuing and digital literacy which contains more than 160 series in entertainment format uh, for digital literacy and for reskilling which contains a possibility to receive a personalized learning trajectory by just uh, proving those skills which you would like to learn which contains a lot of interactive simulators to test your knowledge and to increase the level of engagement of students uh, and and uh, a lot of different tests, like digigrams to test the level of digital literacy. By the way, those are based on European frameworks like Digicom 2.2 and others. And also, uh, 
and, and, and also there are a lot of other great opportunities on the DEA education platform. What is also very important uh, is uh, that we are trying to make a full cycle on the DEA education, so there is a career guidance test. Uh, which you, which the user passes and then receives the list of recommendations uh, among the professions. Uh, a user chooses the profession, watches the educational period, passes the simulator, receives the certificate, and then he sees the open list of job offers in his uh, or her region, so he could generally like um, apply from the platform. Uh, as I mentioned, there are a lot of challenges because of the full-scale Russian invasion in Ukraine, and of course, uh, we had to react fast uh, on uh, on what was happening, starting from the 24th of February last year. So, thanks to the DIA ecosystem, we have been able to launch new services from three days just to several weeks. I will give you several examples and then show a short video. When Russian missiles started to hit the residential areas, people had to go to the shelters. And we understood that they have no access to news. And that's why we embedded TV and radio into the app. Then a lot of people had to relocate from one region to another. And we have created a service which gave a possibility to Ukrainian citizens to receive an IDP status online. IDP means internal displaced person. And then those who received IDP status online could receive the social financial assistance to the DEF. We also have launched war bonds, a possibility to buy war bonds directly from the state just in two clicks. We also have launched a chatbot, Ivoro, with the enemy, which, uh, with authorization through DIA which uh, helped to uh, receive information from Ukrainian citizens to armed forces of Ukraine about Russian troops and Russian equipment. A lot of services have been launched for the past year, and we are still launching new services like e-recovery, a possibility to receive compensation for damage or destroyed property because of a full-scale Russian aggression to Ukraine, just in a few weeks in IDEA app. Uh, and what I would like, like to say that we believe that the less government people have in their lives, the better. We believe that the communication between the government and the citizens should be very easy and just in a several clicks, like the communication with uh, or the interaction with such startups or such companies as uh, Airbnb, uh, Booking, Uber, or many, many others. So that's exactly what we are trying to do with our D ecosystem. Uh, and I'll now show you the small video on what we have done uh, during the full-scale Russian invasion in Ukraine on the digital services front. When the world is falling apart, our main task is to protect the people. After the invasion, DIA acted reactively. We quickly introduced a new set of services vital in extreme situations. Evacuation document combines all personal info in one digital doc and accelerates identification at checkpoints. E-Aid, financial support to sole proprietors to keep the economy going. War bonds, aimed at rebuilding the liberated and soon to be deoccupied Ukrainian cities. State mortgage, military, medics, teachers, and scientists can apply for the state mortgage right in the app. E-Enemy, a chatbot that helps any citizen safely transfer info about the location of Russian troops, names of collaborators, and enemy movements to the armed forces. Numerous attacks of Russian army destroyed a number of TV towers. To provide Ukrainians with uninterrupted access to information, we launched DIA Radio and DIA TV, so that even under blackouts, millions could feel present, and added the in-app army of drones game to help Ukrainians both distract and donate to the common purpose. Has the enemy launched cyber attacks on Ukraine? Of course they have, and they failed. Even when the world is falling apart, our main task is to protect the people. Together, we can build a stronger one. Even during the times of war, people have to continue to receive digital services. They have to have an access to the internet. They have uh, to have a possibility to uh, educate, uh, to, for, to, for the access to education and many others. So basically, you know, with this digital infrastructure that was built before the full-scale Russian invasion, we were able to show our resilience and to be very agile in creating new digital services. And of course, we are still 
uh, working on digitalizing our country and there are a lot of services which are already available and new in our country and there are a lot of digital reforms that we are planning and generally I would like to mention that uh, we are trying to count the anti-corruption effect of digital transformation and uh, for example in 2021 it was around 45 billion uh, rivnias, uh, which is anti-corruption effect, which brings, uh, which uh, digital transformation brings, and there are more, and uh, there will be more statistical data for the past year and for this year. So generally, we believe that digital transformation makes the processes more transparent, efficient, um, and anti-corrupt. And just to make several spoilers, uh, we are working right now uh, on one I believe um, that will be one of the best governmental educational apps in the world. At least we are aiming into that. Uh, we are working on Bria, uh, which will be an educational governmental app, uh, which the, the main vision of which is basically to give the opportunity for every Ukrainian to become who he would like to become. So the app will cover all these stages from kindergarten and ending up with the uh, your first job or life confirming process and will give not just all necessary content, but different services and tools and will, will be totally personalized. So we plan to launch Ria uh, in the next uh, year and uh, the MVP of the in the next year, and we will keep you updated. And also, we are right now working on a national innovation strategy, uh, which uh, generally uh, contains three parts, the Ukrainian innovation ecosystem, uh, the support of this ecosystem, and priority directions where Ukraine will invest its resources in order to make a huge economic and technological leap. And you could see those uh, directions on the slide. However, the strategy is still in process and uh, we aim to finalize it till the end of this year. And of course, we will share with our partners. And Ukraine is really open for the partnerships. We would like to create uh, mutual uh, centers of excellence, mutual R&D centers. Uh, we would like to invite companies, uh, startups, um, and great minds for cooperation with Ukraine. We have a lot of interesting ideas and projects on the digital front, on the innovation front, on the educational and economic. So please, if you have any idea, any question, just don't hesitate to contact me directly, and we will really, we will be really glad to be in touch. And just to finalize my presentation, I would like once again to express our sincere gratitude to the government of Germany, to the organizers of the conference, for this great opportunity, for our partnership, for your support, and of course for your time. I believe this conference will be very interesting and productive for all of you. Thank you very much. Slava Ukraini. Missy Johan, thank you very much for this presentation. It is just incredible to see. I mean, you just started in 2020 with this app, and especially what you've added and features in the past one and a half years is like really, really amazing. So a huge congratulations to the whole team of developers behind that. Um, you're an amazing partner country for us for the Smart Country Convention 2023. We're very happy, and I wish you personally all the best. Thanks for joining. And ladies and gentlemen, we stay a little bit longer